Hey, what's up, Geekscapists? Welcome to a brand new Geekscape episode. I hope the microphone is working. If you guys are following the narrative from episode to episode, I am not happy with the audio on these episodes. Um, sound fine, and then I put them into editing for the podcast listeners, and it sounds like I'm underwater. But if this is your first Geekscape, you don't know the difference. <laughs> You're just like, hey, this guy sounds like he's a little bit underwater. Or he sounds great. Hopefully, he sounds great. Anyway, I'm Jonathan. I like to talk pop culture. I've been doing this show for 13 plus years, and that's what we talk about. But I don't like to do that by myself, which is prevalent here during the pandemic when we're quarantined. We got nobody else to talk to. So I jump on this live stream and I talk to friends as I've done throughout Geekscape, where I talk to a storyteller. Maybe they work in comics, maybe they work in movies, maybe they're musicians. And we just talk about telling stories. Sometimes I get actors, video game people. All that pop culture stuff is what I love. It's kind of what we're into. So that's what the show is. Uh, this week is no different. I got my good friend Natasha Halivi. Uh, I think I just totally butchered her name, but we're going to get her in here to talk about it. Um, we met in some crazy dances. Uh, if you guys are regular geeks, you know that I'm an avid runner. And <laughs> you, you do meet some geeks in runs. Uh, usually their dress is like the Flash, or, uh, you know, there's always, uh, I think, um, there's always a, like this, uh, this athletic gear. Sometimes it'll be like Under Armour and they'll get like the Marvel or DC license and they'll put out like cool stretchy pants that you can run in or like Marvel themed uh, workout gear. And you, so it's easy to spot the geeks in a race because we're geeks. We love to like show our fandom. And when we're uh, running or doing any kind of event, you know, physical activity, uh, we like to show that off there too. So uh, it's easy to spot the geeks. My guest today, though, I ran into in a race in a pretty funny way. I did not know she was a geek. And we can talk to her about whether or not she is a geek. I think she's a geek to, uh, of certain things. But since I met Natasha, she has gone on to become uh, like a triple threat. She started like, she'd always been an actress. But then she started like writing and directing. And she put together like an all-female horror collective. They've actually been interviewed by one of our own shows on Geekscape Horror Movie Night. Uh, we've written them about them on the website. But... What's crazy is this is like the first time that Tasha's been on the show and we have a mutual friend in Lloyd Kaufman. There's a lot of like, there were a lot of like weird tangents for how like, connections for how I knew her. Uh, and then we'll tell you the story about how we actually met. It was crazy. Uh, it, it was a near death experience. Thankfully we both uh, survived and uh, we'll tell you what happened, but um Little did we know we had so much in common, and now she's on the show. I hope you guys have been doing well during the pandemic. I'm still in the process of, like, uh, taking everything I own and, like, paring it down. Uh, here's some good news, though. It allowed me to bring a bunch of my stuff into storage, uh, and so I took inventory of all the comic book boxes that I own. Uh, these things are full of comics. I've read every single one, and drum roll, please, I own over 70 boxes of comics. They are now currently all together in one storage unit. I do not know what I'm going to do with them, but uh, I figure every couple of years I have to take inventory of how many comic books I've amassed over my adult life. I did not start reading again until high school, so as an adult, these are comics that I've collected. Yeah, your boy's got 70 plus boxes, chock full of comics and no plan on what to do with them. So uh, maybe a future episode will start like a, uh, I don't know, we'll start uh, like, a, like a yard sale or something, or, or I'll, I'll start an auction show, an episode where I'm just like, who wants Hulk number blank, 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 going once, going twice, and we'll do one of these live streams where people are just in the comments throwing down um, what comic books they want as I'm showcasing them for you guys. Tons of plans. I'm just trying to be active, all right? This is a nice time to consolidate my life. I'm taking advantage of it while the world is frozen in fear. Other people, they're starting like, I don't know, the 2020 version of like Cobra. They want to be Cobra Commander. Me, I'm like, no, I just want to know how many comic books I have uh, as I go into the rest of my adulthood because I plan on surviving this shit. All right, let's get to our guest. Uh, Tasha, come join the show. Let's introduce you. Let's see what you got. A uh, long-time friend who long time should have been on this show before. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it took the quarantine. It took you to, like, you're, you keep going back and forth to Atlanta, and I keep being like, hey, you should be on the show. Uh, but you're like, I'm in Atlanta. The show was in a physical location. 
I mean, we yeah, and that, now I'm like, <laughs> oh, people who have been avoiding me like for a year are now like, oh, shit. <laughs> I can I, I can webcam in. Um, yeah, I have no excuse for not being on Geekscape now. I, I you know, okay. Um, I mean, so, I'm honored that? to be here. So thank you for. Of Thank you for actually now taking the time to to bother, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's crazy is you've actually been by the Geekscape booth several times because you're usually a guest of Lloyd's uh, at the Troma booth at Comic-Con. And they're usually the next aisle over. So uh, I, I always feel like I see you during Comic-Con or uh, uh -huh. Geekscape-related events because you're always coming by the booth or I'm going to visit Lloyd and you. Um, so it always feels like you've, you've gotten your fill of Comic Con in Geekscape, I, like I've had a, a quite quite a fill of of Comic Cons and Geekscape, not just from from um, not just from Troma and Lloyd, but also um, my husband is often a guest at Comic Cons, and sometimes they tag along. So like I have seen all the different kinds, all the different shapes, all the different sizes in like multiple countries. So I'm like, you want to talk? You want to talk cons? I, I got some. I don't. I actually don't have that many stories. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because I think your con experience is like upgraded, and not like I think you're you're amazing. But um, when you marry Sean, Sean Gunn, who you Geekscapists may know as the dude who is in Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Two, he mocaps Rocket and does a lot of that acting. He just uh, the only thing he doesn't do is like the voice. That's it. Sean is Rocket to me. Sean is Rocket. To me, Sean um, is Rocket. <laughs> and. Uh, and in you were telling me earlier, like your first Comic Con experience, like yeah, you, you were broke as a joke. Yeah, um, my first my first Comic Con was San Diego Comic Con. It was um, 2016, um, and uh, if it if it weren't for my parents, I wouldn't have been there because they hooked Kansas and I up with a hotel room. <laughs> Otherwise, um, we basically Kansas and I, Kansas Bowling, who um, directed a trauma film that I was in called BC Butcher. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman invited both of us down to join the Troma booth, aka help um, Hawk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love how that works. Yeah. yeah, come on down. We'll promote you. Can you sell some DVDs? Yeah, and how scantily clad can you do it? Right. Um, <laughs> um, if anybody's ever seen anything remotely closely related to Troma, you understand all of that. Um, if you're a Geekscapist, you know what's up. Great, great, perfect. Yeah. Um, so we went down, we drove down, um, we went to our hotel room and immediately showed up to San Diego Comic-Con, first con ever, first was was that. And it it's is the like, Super Bowl of Comic-Cons, yeah. It's like, I mean, the Super Bowl is a big deal, but I'm pretty sure San Diego Comic-Con is a bigger deal. Like the entire city is taken over. I'm, sh I'm sure many people here have, have been, but the, the entire city is taken over. It's not like you're like, oh, I'm going to a building where where Comic-Con is happening. It is like you are going to a town that has like been taken completely over by like everything sci-fi. Restaurants are taken over by like the sci-fi channel and the whoever and the whatever. And everybody's got a spot and like people build roller coasters and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You gotta go on a zombie run through like the 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 baseball stadium. And what yeah. you said is, is very true that the whole city gets taken over during Comic Con, and restaurants become themed by sponsors and things like that. But for somebody who's broke, and I've spent many Comic Cons without any money on my pocket, and the and the tough thing about that is with those sponsorships and with like that captive audience that Comic Con brings every year, the prices on food and hotels and everything goes way up. We were looking at hotel uh, prices today. We were talking about hotel prices in San Diego. Now that San Diego Comic Con's been canceled. There's right. been talk of like, oh, maybe we should just go down to San Diego and like reminisce as small groups and like just kind of hang out and, and but with be, masks on, with masks on and social distancing. But we look, uh, our friend Chris Gore, who's a previous guest of Geekscape from Film Threat, he uh, he said that the the price of the Marriott's like two hundred dollars, when it's usually three fifty a night or three hundred. It's so great. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe if it's maybe, we'll see, we'll see maybe. how June goes. Bring San Diego Comic Con back to what it once was. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of log boxes in a basement. <laughs> we could do that. 
Uh, um, so, so there is talk of just going down to San Diego and hanging out. But that first Comic Con, like, how did you, like, what were some of the things that you learned where you're like, okay, where's the free food? Where is yeah. the, how do I survive this? I learned where none of the free food was. I didn't <laughs> learn how to survive it. It was, I think, he, here's how you can attend Comic Con. Like, as somebody who understands, you know, what to expect and has friends who can like hook you up with like all the details on like how to get into the parties and what lines to stand in overnight and what lines not to stand in overnight. And then you can come as a guest. And when you come with trauma, you come right in between those two things. So you have no information from friends on how to get into the cool parties. You have no hookups from the con on how to get into cool parties and you have nobody escorting you anywhere and you are wandering around like trying to find the room that you're supposed to be at the trauma panel for at like 11 p.m at night because that's when yeah. the trauma panel happens and it's like it's it's the most hilarious way i think to experience a comic-con is by going as a guest of trauma because um first of all you're you're welcome and loved by so many people trauma fans are are the best lloyd kaufman is um is just incredibly funny and humorous and loving and knows knows everyone and loves everyone and means it genuinely from his heart and is very generous with what he can offer. Um, so there's that aspect that's really, 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 really wonderful. But then there is definitely the aspect of like, well, there's no golf cart picking me up and taking me like backstage to get yeah. to a cool panel. <laughs> yeah, the panels are always late. And I always feel like Matt Kelly from who you know, who he hosts Horror Movie Night for us. Like, I feel like yeah. he's always like the, like the only one at that panel because it's 11 o'clock at night. And this past year, um, I wasn't at the hotel room. I used that night, and that was like my socializing night. Mm -hmm. And he was done with that oh, panel. He, he, he was done with that panel, and he's like, "I want to go to bed." And he did. And I had the hotel key, so he like had to carry all the free shit they give out at that panel. Oh. And he like had to hunt for me from hotel to hotel looking for the key. But um, that being said, um, I love Lloyd, and I really love Megan and Marcus who run the the Trumbull yeah. booth. I look forward Very to seeing incredible. them every summer. And I'm gonna miss them this year. Uh, and next year, I'll see how much their baby has grown because, like, they're like family to me. Yeah. Uh, and it's not because Megan has a crush on my brother Paul. From... <laughs> <laughs> but she's always, she's like, hey, is your brother Paul coming this summer? Because my brother, former WWE wrestler Paul London, uh, he came and signed once at our booth one summer. And every summer since, Megan has been like, is your brother coming this summer? <laughs> Maybe you can bring him. I don't know who has a bigger crush, she or Marcus, like when it comes down to it. Uh, he's a big wrestling fan. So now you are married to Sean Gunn. Yeah. So Raccoon. how the, did that change? The con experience uh, changed. Well, one, I don't have to do anything. I just get free food. I just get rides places and I just get to sit in cool spots and watch cool things while Sean does all the work. So that's fun. Um, but But as it turns out, when you're there representing um, a Marvel character and his work in Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and the Avengers movies, um, people are a little more excited to host you and and escort you and bring you gifts and flowers and, and roses all day long. Um, and I just kind of like hang back and get to like, I'm like, hmm, you just got, oh, I'll eat some of that. Like, that's delicious. So uh, I could have used it back in 2016, but I guess I'll take it now. <laughs> I don't know why they treat Marvel representatives so much better than trauma representatives. I feel like it's unfair. And in fact, as far as I'm concerned, Sean is a trauma representative because yeah. he was in a trauma film 20 years before I was in a trauma film. Uh, yeah called Tromeo and Juliet. So yeah. as, as, I mean, I feel like we're the same type of royalty. I don't know. I mean, I, if you <laughs> want to drop that, you can probably drop that a few places and it might be like get you into like a Guar concert, but, I, but I, I, I don't know what the currency would be like at Comic-Con. Um, I mean, Marvel does bring in a lot of their business. I can understand, but I think there's a Ben Fold song that like, he's like, hey, now that I'm famous, I don't need any of this shit for free. I <laughs> needed it when I was like playing in piano bars, like nobody knew yeah. who I was. And I think, I, I don't know the name of the, of, the, of the song, but there's definitely a Ben Fold song. And I'm sure many successful artists have have made art about yeah. how getting free shit now that they don't need the free shit. Yeah. But I will tell you, Tasha, 
get all that free shit. And, uh, and, and Sean, if Sean, I, I think you're listening. Um, I would say, uh, when the tables turn and, uh, she's getting all the free shit and you're right in, in, in she, if it's her golf cart you're riding in, then, then you'll be happy and you'll be like, Hey, payback. Now, now I get to ride for free a little bit. We're going to get in the biggest fight tonight now. No, no, don't be like that. That's not true. You, you guys were recently married. You can't be fighting over things like that. You got you to keep the support structure a little bit longer. Um, and let's talk about that because uh, one of the things that I think is awesome and why I was like, I was like here's, here's what's been going on with Geekscape is I end up with like a ton of male guests and I love the male guests. I love the dudes, but I'm like, come on, let, we got to be showcasing some female creators. And I looked up on your Instagram and it, it just seemed like, hey, dummy, uh, Tasha has been making stuff for the last few years. She put together a, an all-female horror collective called the, uh, the it, it, you want to pronounce it? Fatal yeah, Fatal the Fatal Fatal Collective. Fatal. Yep. We're a group of, um, we're, we're a group of six female horror directors. Um, I should say creators. Um, five directors, myself, uh, Megan Rosati, Lola Blanc, Dan and Jacquet, Francesca Maldonado. Um, and then um, as a creator um, and an animator, Linda Chen also is a part of that group. Um, and we all sort of came together and said, hey, we see that there's a lack of, of female representation in genre and horror specifically. And we care about this genre. We enjoy watching it. We enjoy creating around it how can we help each other do this um so we formed a collective which was us sitting down you know the first time in in somebody's at somebody's kitchen table and saying what do we do we want to create we want to make things how can we help each other and it took us um really not that long to figure out the way we were going to help each other was to actually physically help each other and actually physically help create together so we um we created as much uh, as much sort of proof of concept as we possibly could. And um, with very, very, very little money, pooled our resources, got some great donations. Um, Panavision gave us a really generous uh, donation for a three day period of equipment, which made a huge difference for us. Um, and we worked on six projects, really five projects because one was animated, um, five projects over a three day period uh and everybody rallied i mean we all were there for each other to work on our projects that we were directing but you know for example like on on my project on the day i shot i shot along with the other another director francesca maldonado um and my dp was sarah garth who was incredible and amazing to work with and um she had uh mike d uh who shot uh brightburn um uh, working with her as a as her second, and then they switched places um, for the second half of the day. So they both got to do their art with a different director and still contribute to sort of the cause of working through this like really gnarly day. And we all did the same. We ad'd each other's projects, or we did runs to get food. Um, we were in thinking of pandemic times. We were in like the, the most crowded little places with all kinds of people because we were just in each other's apartments shooting, um, and we just rallied. Really, is is what it is. Is we kind of pulled the we pulled the resources. We tried to convince a lot of people we could do it, and we we did it. <laughs> yeah, and and how much of that to me, you know, and when you think about these, I, I, Heidi and I have uh, Heidi's kind of starting to get the directing bug. And we finished our short right in time for festivals to be shut down by a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and but she kind of has this, she has an idea for a, a short she wants to do. I'm showing her like some older films that are kind of in that other school. This would be like the Corman school that, cool. you know, so I just showed her like five easy pieces and I've got like some other like late sixties, early seventies stuff I want to show her. Um, but I would say that talk about that Corman school, the school that you and Sean came out of and James Gunn came out of is the same kind of school and that's Lloyd's school. Yeah. You know, very, where it's like any way you gotta get this done, let's get it done. And so hearing that you guys then in the uh the collectively got together and and like powered each other through one crazy weekend of making proof of, proof of concepts, the trauma way 
Like yeah. that's that's your film school, and I think that that is as valuable as the one I paid for. You know what I mean? I mean, it, there's so much value in just doing the work and moving forward. I think you know you just mentioned coming from like that kind of kind of came, same like Corman school, Kaufman school. Um, you know, James, Sean's brother, uh, James Gunn has said many, many, many times, and Sean repeats this and I repeat this when we're getting stuck on something, you just have to finish what you start. It's so mm -hmm. simple and it's true for anything in life. So there's no reason it shouldn't also apply to filmmaking, but for some reason, the concept of filmmaking is very overwhelming, probably because what we see when we see films is so huge and and spectacle and overwhelming and beautiful and perfect and well-written. You know, the things that we actually, that ever really make it to market aren't everybody's, the first work that everybody did. Sometimes, some people are just genius. Um, but it does take, you know, it takes a lot to get to that place. But when we see that, it's overwhelming and you say, oh, I can't, I can't do that. I can't make it look like that. I don't know what that special effect is. I, I have no idea how to write like that, you know? And maybe that's true. Maybe you don't know how to write like that. So maybe you find someone to collaborate. Maybe you don't know how to shoot like that. You find a, a DP with, with a huge amount of experience or a small amount of experience, but a great deal of spirit, um, you know, you, you work with people who believe in you and will encourage you. Fatal Collective definitely was that, you know, we all knew exactly where we were and what our level of experience was and still said, you can do it and you can do it at this level mm -hmm. um, and trusted each other and having, you know, you've got to build the, the right teams and build the right trust and, and finish it. I think I just said like 10 different things at once. No, 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 it was great. And I think that I know everything was consistent in and of itself. I don't know why you're hiding the seventh member that you guys kicked out, uh, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> whose body you buried out in the desert? I'm kidding. I'm making up shit. I'm making up rumors. Yeah, um, it's fine. I've heard, rumors are great. So. But I think that's important. I think that what you just said, it, the word is like a community. You have to create some kind of support structure or it, nobody gives a shit about your movie. Like, I mean, I'm not saying yours specifically. I'm saying no one cares about yeah. my movie. Like, like what, this is what I tell people: the industry has lasted for over a hundred years without you. It's going to do just fine without you. Nobody cares. You have to find a way to make it without anybody's help, and then slowly but surely, you're going to start picking up the people who are willing to carry stuff for you or help out or stay late or work for free or just yeah. sweat. And, and eventually those are going to be the people that you then hire. And, um, and, and then you, you have access to their community or their skills. And yeah, anybody who says, oh, I don't know how to write like that or I don't know how to shoot like that or I don't know how to write something that's feature length. I'm like, yet. The word you haven't said is in the parentheses and it's yet. Yeah. You just haven't done it yet. You know, you said something um, really important, which was you have to do it yourself, you know, for people to to get on board, basically. I didn't phrase that exactly the same way you did, but no, um, you know, something to that effect. And I think that that's um, very true. There's another horror film that I shot um, called Beauty Juice. I was really lucky to have a great DP with a great deal of experience. His name is Charles Pappert. I think he's uh, awesome. I've seen he, Beauty Juice. He's awesome. His because Kate awesome. did the poster, remember? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And it's an awesome poster. Um, but if that's a great example of, um, you know, I edited that film myself and colored it myself and learned Da Vinci Resolve and I'd never used it. And I think I did an okay job of it. However, once I had done that work, somebody else saw it in it before I had released it and said, um, hey, good job coloring. Do you have any interest in maybe having somebody who really has a, a more experience coloring it? And I was like, yeah, but like, I mean, I actually have no budget. So I have no idea how much that costs or what that means. And he was like, just, just, calm down, let me connect you with this woman named Monica Escalante. Um, she's a young colorist um, who at that time was working at eFilm, she's now working at Marvel, um, and said like, she's taking on small projects on weekends, let me just see if she'd be interested. And she took a look at it and she loved it and she was interested um, and Charles Pappert came at, to this to eFilm and uh, as, did, as did I and we spent the day there and I had the opportunity to color right next door to it who was coming out that week oh <laughs> right the war yeah. version yeah. 
you know, and I, it was like, oh, this is what it looks like to color. This is what it looks like to see this film in this size. This is what it looks like to work with somebody who can take the words that I'm saying that aren't necessarily technical, but are about the look and feel and interpret it and bring the technical interpretation to it to make it have those feelings. So it was, a, it was the most clear example of you have to do it first. I mean, I, I really, I opened Resolve and I was like, <laughs> like I had no idea what I was doing. And the fact that I tried made somebody else say, oh, you're, you're trying, let me give it to you now. And um, I think it's really true. You have to do it and learn it and do it, learn it bad maybe. Maybe you're not gonna be as good of a colorist as somebody who's a professional colorist. You're not gonna be as good of an animator as somebody who's a professional animator. I just opened After Effects for the first time on Sunday to make um, a film for a film competition. And I opened <laughs> After Effects and I was like, I had this idea that I wanted to make. I had made like the first version of this thing called Jane in Space. Jane obviously playing homage to Barbarella and Jane Fonda. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the uh, Jane in Space 2 and I'll make her in space. And so in order to make her in space, you know, these are quarantine films. This is another really important message, actually. Like sometimes you have to really have your community and your support and people who understand all of the pieces. And sometimes if you have an idea, make it on your own. Maybe it's gonna come out bad and you toss it. Maybe it's gonna come out great. So this was an example of, I, I shot it the first night uh, and I looked at the footage and it was just, it just wasn't, it was terrible. And I've shot it again and opened up After Effects and put it into After Effects. And I was just like, what have I done? I don't know how to put my face into into space now. Because um, you, you had to put your face on a space suit. And then there was a, there's a lot going on in your short because then you had to add like the reflection of the stars and everything to it. There's a lot of compositing going on. Not exactly something to bite off for a first time like effects person, but fuck it. But hey. Fuck. Okay. I, had, I had an idea, I wanted to try it. And somebody who does that professionally could have done a really rad job of it. But I feel really psyched about what I did and it was it was enough, I felt happy about it enough to then submit it to the competition because I was like, this is cool, I like it. That's great. Maybe somebody will see it and be like, ah, she likes working with visual effects. I know someone who does visual effects that would like working with her. I don't think I will ever be the one to take on the job of visual effects. I probably maxed out my visual effects capability yesterday or Sunday. But you don't know that unless you throw, like you don't know if you can swim unless you throw yourself into the deep end. Yeah. Like you yeah. just don't know. And maybe you can't swim. And maybe you drown and die. But you, you won't drown and die. It's fucking filmmaking. Unless you're working for that yeah. asshole who beat people on the train tracks in Georgia, you're not gonna fucking die. Okay. Like, Okay, unless well, somebody will throw in a life preserver and you'll yeah. out and it's gonna be fine. But, you know, and, and what we were saying earlier was that yes, filmmaking is nerve wracking and it, and it has caused me in the past to be like, uh, I want to take a right where I should probably be taking a left. And there have been times where you will shy away from the challenge, but ultimately, those are the shying away is a mistake. Uh, and the more you do it, the more you realize how completely not fatal it is, and yeah. beyond that. How most people just don't give a damn and like, <laughs> a safety net or not a safety net if you make a total like if you make a flop nobody cares and if you make a hit everybody cares there are very few flops that people have cared about yeah and it's mainly like the super mario brothers movie and like everything else is like there's not a lot of flops and again going back to lloyd in the trauma school those are movies that were made to get made and sold in foreign markets and on the boom of the VHS era. Like they, they weren't made to, to, to win Oscars. They were made to, to like shit product and have a cool poster hoping that somebody in, in France would buy it or that it would end up in a, in a yeah. VHS store. And that's how it worked. Or even before that, when he had to four wall his own movies and take them theater to theater, he knew that like putting Toxic Avenger or something outrageous on a on a marquee or in a poster was gonna was gonna get people into a into a midnight screening in Detroit. He didn't have to worry about any of this stuff. He just needed to get the thing done or no money was gonna come in. Yeah. And and you know, since you're using that as an example, um, he still does that. I oh, went yeah. to, um he sent me a contract that looked the size of the fucking Bible for my first short film, and I was like, I ain't signing like, this. 
Oh, Lloyd, I know you know all the tricks. And his wife is as, as lovely as Lloyd is. She's equally as lovely. And she, and she tried to get me to come. She kept telling me when I was, I was trying to make my short into a feature called, it was a short called Gay by Dawn. It's a horror movie for homophobes. Uh, it's an anti-homophobic movie. Uh, Sounds like an important movie to be made. It, I, I would love to make a feature film version of Gay by Dawn. And we tried, and she kept being like, come to upstate New York, because she was the film commissioner for the state of New York. York. And she kept saying, come to upstate New York. We got woods. You can come do it. And I kept being like, hey, maybe that's it. The script just yeah. never. And the script for Gay by Dawn does not have to be great. Right. It, just, it just wasn't. It still wasn't good. <laughs> We it batted was, around. We, we gave it. We gave know, it a couple if tries. If Lloyd sees this, he'll probably call you immediately and be like, "So about that script, Lloyd? We can do it. Uh, I want to get Fred Ward in it, and then um, is Sean there? Can we get Sean in? Yeah. He can. He can play one of the one of the uh, hundred one of the one of the the Al Qaeda dudes with the rifles. He can be like, "Sounds gonna, we can like do it. Casting. You, you got to be in it." You gotta be in this. Yeah, I mean, like wave. Yeah, you. Right. Sean, wages. Sean, Sean requests trauma wages. If if you're, you gotta yeah. be in the trauma. Sean, Sean, can you pick your eyes into this frame right now and, and, yeah, and I'm checking <laughs> to see if Fred Ward was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, <laughs> like, like <laughs> Sean, what? like here, here's the dream cast. We get Fred Ward, mm -hmm. right? We gotta have Rima Williams in it, right? John Hawks for a little bit of like cachet, right? I know John. John Hawks, like a, little bit, in. a little bit of cachet, um, but then we kind of start making uh, expendables of horror. We got to call Robert England. Are you? First of all, I have to jump in and say, are you suggesting that I do not bring cachet on my own? <laughs> you, you, you do, you do. Um, but you, John Hawks is Oscar name nominated John Hawks. You get what I'm saying on that one, right? People be like, oh, I want to go see this movie. It might be yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. And then about 15 minutes in, they're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> this movie's terrible. <laughs> but we already had their money, honey. You hear this? You see the strategy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Fred, I love this strategy. <laughs> I love Fred Ward. I think, um, I think first, Right Stuff is one of my five favorite movies of all time. Oh, it's fantastic. And um, we're not making that. <laughs> and I think if you can call it a maybe you are, you if, don't know. If you can call it a B movie, Miami Blues is damn near the best B movie ever made. I've not seen it. Oh, but Miami Blues, that thing just got like a big resurgence. Everybody started talking about it again. Did they? I did, maybe I had never heard of this movie, and then suddenly I'm starting to see clips from it getting shared on Twitter. And I'm like, what is this? I must I mean, it. Just to make, it's awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to, you know what we're going to do? More Jennifer Jason Lee. Mm -hmm. I just got, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to put the, you know, we'll put it out. We're, we're working on some other movies. Right now. Uh, this, is actually, this is actually a, a Zoom meeting about a movie that we're making that everybody <laughs> happens to be able to watch. <laughs> we're going to, we'll get it going. Um, when are you when are you guys going back to work? I had a movie I was casting when this thing hit, and now everybody's just working on cartoons. Suddenly, we're all making cartoons. Man. Um, I was supposed to start a movie in August um, that uh, is now um, tentatively pushed to January. Uh, so I can't imagine that I'll be doing anything before then. Probably, I don't know. I mean, I canceled all my conventions for the rest of the year. Obviously, um, yeah. And um, I mean, I don't, I, there, I don't, can't imagine there will be any conventions for the rest yeah. of the year. But um, <clears throat> and um, except for I have a small uh, San Diego Comic Con that was. Just yeah, yeah, guys, let's yeah. find the week, let, the weekend of Comic Con. Let's go down there and let's just sit on the pier and like Five. eat a sandwich yeah. and be like, guys, remember Comic Con? They're not even playing. They're not even running the carousel. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> That'd be like the Geekscape themed Comic Con where it's like, oh. There's some nerds over there. <laughs> we can get golf carts if we want, but we have to yeah. steal them. <laughs> the only thing I want is a golf cart ride wherever I'm going. <laughs> Why is that so much to ask for? Uh, yeah, no, I I don't know when we're gonna go back to work, but we have to. But but that's what why what I watched your short, the Jade in Space Two, and you guys both worked on it, which is what we're talking about, like support structure. I did very little, but I. Yeah, you. I mean, but those composites, like, you, did some, camera and, 
which I ended up kind of doing poorly, believe it or not, because I my pacing was a little off. But uh, he does that really great. Uh, and I, I helped great. um I helped color some of the images that she used, but that's it. And but uh, you know, here's the thing. I think let me just tell you what I think is the thing because uh, Heidi and I made a short together, and I'm always joking. I don't know if I'm going to make a. Sh I don't know if we're going to make another short together. Uh, I think I'm going to be the cupcake cake guy. If you want to go make a short, I'll be the cupcake guy. And if I go and make something, you can be the cupcake person. Like having someone in your like. I think in relationships, there's a level of equality. I think in storytelling i think there's a level of um just you have to have some kind of singular voice that has to win those conversations does that make sense uh here, here's my significant other i just jumped in here for a piece um i you know it's it's like i think it's there's both of those elements, right? I think you have to know, you know, Sean's working on another project that like I chime in on once in a while right now. And I have some other projects that I ask for Sean's opinion on. And I think always when we have a conversation about it, the work up levels, you know, and it becomes better. But when it comes to like the day of shooting, you know, there is a hierarchy for a reason when you're shooting and it's because it's necessary to keep things moving in the right direction. And it is important to have, you know, when you get too much collaboration, things get watered down. You have to say like, okay, at a certain point, we trust this artistic view and, and we're gonna say like, run with that viewpoint. I, maybe I don't understand it completely, but you do and you have a purpose and you have a reason and I don't totally understand it. And in the edit, I really hope to understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, while there is like a time and a place for the collaboration, there is also a time and a place to like kind of abide by the rules that were set down for a reason, which is like, you're in charge, <laughs> then you're in charge, then yeah. you're in charge and you're getting cupcakes. We that's that. why I'm hosting the show and she's in the other room doing the laundry. Wait, where is my, like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> where is my, me. I, I've been quarantining at her place. So I have to mention that is her production company broadcasting, broadcasting, broadcasting from her studios, studios cuz yeah. and and just for the record i think sometimes jonathan and i have a, a like a we feel like i feel like sometimes we're having like banter and a discussion and he thinks we're like arguing so and i think don't that, hit me <laughs> i think i think so. that's what happens sometimes during production it was the first thing we've ever made together though you know. i feel like it could happen uh, maybe the next thing we collaborate on has legs also, there's like some level of like. Does that mean it's going to be a child? Yeah, what? Are you, uh, you a human child? <laughs> no. But, but I guess I guess I, I guess I'll, I'll say it here. I got her a mogwai. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome until it starts sweating, and then we're all fucked. Yeah. But I don't know what the rules are. I don't know what time zone it's calibrated for. <laughs> Can I ask a quick Mogwai question? Yeah, of course. You're not supposed to feed it after midnight, right? Till yeah. when? Everything's after midnight. Everything's after midnight. Till sunrise? If or anybody gives me a Mogwai, I'm wrapping it in a fucking bag and I am uh, suffocating it. Oh, and no. I'm doing it very quickly so that it doesn't very sweat very and get wet. That, that took a real dark turn. I know. But come on. You, you might as well be giving somebody a, pin, a, a grenade without a pin on it. Like sooner or later, that thing's going to go off. Like you can't be giving people mogwais. It's irresponsible. And I think Billy's got a lot of fucked up shit to talk about. With if you knew you were gonna get the gremlin, the one from Gremlins too, that is like Aww. very erudite and wearing glasses and like a smoking jacket and stuff, then I would, I would rather have that, that gremlin than a, than a mogwai even. Right, but Sean, remember that gremlin only came about because it drank all that formula. <laughs> like, like that was not the natural. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, right. Memory. <laughs> I mean, it, those, those gremlins were augmented by their. By, by, <laughs> this is welcome to Geekscape. Those gremlins were augmented by their environment. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe there, there might be some people who are like, you know what? If I could probably raise that gremlin right, because I'll provide a, a, an environment for it where that gremlin will turn out to be okay and not eat everybody. That's a big mistake. Okay, like that is a big mistake, but they're, I mean, we're seeing the pandemic. They're definitely the so people. Parallels. Who, yeah, there are definitely people who are like, I ain't going to trust science on this Mogwai thing. Right. Gremlins right. 2 is a great movie, and it's, it, it was the, my brother recently made a list of movies 
where the sequel is better than the original. And he put it on Twitter just, you know, for his own vanity, I suppose. But uh, I... Uh, to share an idea. Right, share ideas. <laughs> Give people ideas. For right. So I, uh, but Gremlins 2 was the first movie I looked for. I'm like, Gremlins 2 better be on this list. And it was. He had it on his list. So What else would be on there besides Jane in Space 2? Which, <laughs> would you guys keep sure? Oh, yeah. Would, and, and real quick, uh, Geekscape, because we are going to talk about what sequels are better than the originals. If you guys want to vote uh, right now, what's going on till Monday is Jane in Space 2. Bye, cutie. Uh, Jane in yeah. Space 2 <laughs> is up for voting, and it needs your votes. Uh, what I want you guys to do is I'm throwing up on the uh, live stream uh, Natasha's uh, Instagram handle. I want you guys to go and find it. And then uh, I also want that. when you guys find the Instagram handle, it's Tasha Litas. Uh, go to the the linked in her bio. There's a link. It'll take you to her short. Vote for the short. You got to register for oddpop.com, but it's a really cool website, especially for you filmmakers, because they have contests like this coming up all the time where you have to be creative in quarantine or with your limited uh, resources or with Sean doing your Photoshop. Like, and, and you got to figure out how to make your short and then have your friends vote for it. And I want you guys to vote for Jane in Space too, because I was I watched it. I was like, let's see how it is. I was totally impressed by your first like time doing compositing it was awesome and yes. beyond that, opened it sunday morning beyond that tasha um what i think makes the short really work is and why i wanted heidi to watch it because i think both of you are really great dialogue writers and really great character writers because it very easily could have felt like a long two minutes you've seen those shorts that feel like a long two it's not a long two minutes it's fun and it's poppy and the I just want you Geekscapists to watch the short, vote for it, but really like think about all the filmmaking that's been successful in limitations. And like, th like there's no reason why we can't be doing that right now. Limitations, if anything, like help, help your filmmaking. They help channel it. I just brought The Bicycle Thieves, my favorite movie over for Heidi to watch because, hey, those guys weren't gonna wait for the end of World War fucking two to make their movies. Yeah, Rome was in rubble. We're gonna make our damn movie about a guy who stole his bicycle. Like, why not? Yeah. I think it makes some really good filmmaking. I mean, uh, also now is a great time if you have an idea of something to make that you can make with whoever's in your house, even if it's just you. The the two that I made, the first one that I made, the rules were nobody else could help you, so mm -hmm. I legitimately made it by myself. Um, but like. I right, bye. I'm trying to get some more light on. He's gonna get uh, yeah. on us. It, yeah, we're starting to get comments. Like our window we're, is like in the sun, and I'm like, I saw it. We're I'm, we're starting to get comments from people who are throwing out their favorite sequels. So, oh, oh, might, man. Sean, you might have to come back for that one. We're gonna, um, yeah, like, get that list. Um, I do just want to say though that it, it it is like you know when you are in a time. I'm gonna move into the shade a little sure. bit at least. Um, where you do, where you are confined and you have the rules, you kind of have like permission, a little bit of better permission to try it because mm -hmm. everyone gets it. If it's not, you know, if you didn't make like Avengers four, you know, they're gonna understand. Is, is there news on that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like uh, it. I it, just want stilt man news. That's all I want. <laughs> Um, you know, do, do it now. You can use your iPhone. Nobody's going to be like, oh my gosh, how lame you use your iPhone to make a film. People are going to be like, cool. You, you put your idea in, out there in a way that you could during these circumstances. So use the, the rules and use the, the, you know, the ups Agreed. and the downs, the roller coasters, the highs and the lows. There are so many emotions. A lot of the film contests that are out that you guys should totally look for if you're interested are like, you know, they're themed around what we're experiencing right now and the emotions that we're going through and the toilet paper that we don't have access to, whatever it is, like it's all kind of embedded in these, these projects. If, if anything, the the gleam gets stripped away and you're just left with whether or not you can tell a sincere story. And yeah. when ultimately it's not about that technology because John Cassavetes would have killed for this camera that we've had on our phone. Like he had to tape together a fucking Bolex camera and like shoot. Oh, but also what I wouldn't give to shoot in a with a Bolex camera. <laughs> we shot Gabe Gabe by Dawn with a Bolex camera. So cool. <laughs> um and okay, so sequels. Here oh, yeah. we go. Do you you got the, list. <laughs> the list is up. Okay, let me go through my brother's list really quickly. This is whose um, list? 
And I'm going to tell. Oh, this yeah. Is, oh, this these is my are brother, so true. These are right. This is my brother James Gunn's list of sequels that are better than the originals. And then I'm going to say very briefly whether he's correct or not. Okay. okay. So um, Toy Story 2, that's correct. Godfather 2, that's correct. Superman 2, um, I don't really remember. Uh, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. My brother loves that movie. I've never seen it. Uh, Evil Dead 2, that's correct. Shrek 2, I've never seen. Dark Knight, that's correct. Bride of Frankenstein, definitely correct. Hellboy 2, I've never seen either one of them. Uh, Road Warrior, that's correct. For a few dollars more, God, it's been a long time. I don't remember. Paddington 2, I hear that movie's great. Never seen it. X2, I don't even know what that is. It's X-Men uh, 2. It's the one where, like, it was the second X-Men movie that Brian oh, Singer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that correct. was better. Because like, Nightcrawler, yeah. yeah. Empire Strikes Back, that's correct. That's easy. That's um, an easy one. Uh, Wrath of Khan, I don't remember that one that well. Oh, dude, he fucking starts by putting a, a worm in the dude's ear. Like, yeah, Wrath of Khan is definitely, be yeah. definitely better than the motion picture. Yes, yeah, uh, Wrath of Khan. Superman 2, that's emphatically correct. Uh, Batman Superman Returns, two? that's correct. Superman 2. Um, yeah. Gremlins 2, of course, I just said, that's correct. Blade 2, I don't think I've ever seen. That was the Guillermo del Toro one, that is a better one. Legend of the Drunken Master, um, I've never seen that. Yeah, the only, the it, best part of Legend of the Drunken Master is when the old dude flips back onto a table and you know that they just reversed the film. That mm -hmm. shit is tight. Uh, <laughs> Desperado, I recall that being correct. Um, Oh, this is a here's a here's one people might have beef with, but I agree with them. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. What? Uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with my brother on that one. I think the first one's uh, kind of boring. I got uh, yes, I agree, but the, sadly, I think the sequel's boring. It's just more boring. I'm like, oh, it's actually amazing, but the movie's a little. They're slow. This movie was slow. Yeah, it's a little slow. Uh, and it's, and, 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 of course, and, God, it's been a long time. Sean, uh, real quick, uh, you know. We talked about it on the show a few episodes ago, but Blade Runner actually got an unofficial sequel. The movie Soldier with Kurt Russell was written as a Blade Runner fucking sequel. Same screenwriter. And when you talk, when you hear uh, the timelines described in Soldier where Kurt Russell's like, like robotic whatever characters had to fight in the different wars, they're the same wars that the replicants fought in Blade Runner. <laughs> so... Wow! Basically, yeah, soldier. Kurt Russell's basically playing a replicant. It's very interesting. interesting. Very I interesting. Know that. I've never seen Soldier. No, uh, not a lot of people did. There's only a few more on this list. Um, Final Destination Two. I don't. I don't know. Um, I liked Final Destination One. Captain America: Winter Soldier. Uh, that's definitely better. Definitely better. Uh, also, the martial arts in Captain America: Winter Soldier are like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, not just mm -hmm, Swordsman like, mm -hmm. Two. And then the two final ones, he says, P.S., it's an unarguable fact. Alien and aliens are equal. I disagree. I think alien is better. Um, you, think, you think the first one, you think the Ridley Scott one is going to be superior, in my opinion? I and feel like they're different genres. Like Terminator 2 on the list, and it belongs. And I disagree. I don't think Terminator 2 does belong on the list. But there you, you go. You don't think Terminator 2 is better than Terminator 1? I do not. Por qué? What? Why is that? Um, uh... Well, I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. First one's better. This <laughs> is pretty damn good. I uh, we're super, probably going to watch both of these I tonight. Von Bolden <laughs> says, Scream 2, uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, for sure. Revenge of the Sith. Well, we're not going to get into the prequels, please, sir. Rush Hour 2. <laughs> How are this? Those are the same movie. Uh, Incredibles 2. No, first Incredibles is awesome. And no. you know what? You said um, Halloween 2018. We're not. We're no. not. One, you need to do, go back to the drawing board. Be smart, no, I don't like that one. Um, I would. I would definitely. No, I definitely think that Sam Raimi's second Spider-Man movie is fucking awesome. I like the Terminator's kind of gritty, and and I like that Terminator feels like an indie movie. Mm -hmm. And Terminator Two is just so like the special effects are amazing. But it just feels so Hollywood. It gets a little schmaltzy. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I, I think the first Terminator. But it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've seen either one of them, to be honest. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's that's really <laughs> up for debate. People, people, uh, there are people who who argue one way or the other. What do you argue? I don't, I'm so close to them. It's so yeah. hard to, to me, you know, Guardian. I have a I have a much bigger role in Guardians too. So for me, as on an on screen presence, it's kind of better to say Guardians too. But there was something so special and unique about the experience of making the first Guardians 
that I, I can't, I can't like judge it in a vacuum. It was so, it was such a different thing for me and for my career and to be a part of this, of something so huge that I, I, it'll always probably feel a little more special in but a way. Also the, to this, you know, the same point for audiences, seeing Guardians 1 for the first time was such a different movie going experience than any other Marvel film had been for sure. Any other superhero film had been for sure. Whereas going into Guardians 2 audiences, you know, had a different expectation for what those films were, especially by then, like the um, Thor Ragnarok had come out. Is that true? Is that true? Am I right? I think, I think Thor Ragnarok, I think Ragnarok was after. after. Ragnarok. But like, you know, there was already like the the pacing and the and the 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 liveliness and the joy and the music and the experience in a different way and the like the the yeah. like grittiness that wasn't about like. I'm a superhero, but like. I think what you mean is the maybe, maybe the weird. I think weird. Well, yeah, for, the, for, the where you'd come from if you hung out at Trauma. We ever. were very familiar with with James's work. I worked with Peter Alton on a series for Fox. Like I met James a few times, and for sure, like we pushed pretty hard uh, here on Geekscape when Super came out. We loved it, and cool. I remember at WonderCon we had both Rain and James on the show talking about it. Um, so. Like when he got the gig for Guardians, the first thing was like, "Oh shit, they're making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie." Anybody who kind of had their ear to the ground kind of knew Marvel was trying to stretch beyond the superhero movies, and they needed it because uh, my argument is that up to that point, everything felt in that same tone, uh, and they had like their different tones here and there with some fantasy, with some World War II stuff, but really they needed some weird, some like really weird shit. And that first Guardians, I remember. I went to the premiere and it was exactly what it needed to be. And it blew, I would argue that that thing turned the universe as importantly as the first Iron Man was, did in saying, hey, this is what we could do. And it just expanded everything. I love that first Guardians movie so much. Yeah, um, it, was, it was such a weird thing. It was such a, a, a cool thing making it too that like when we first started, we had no idea. And it seemed that there were so many ways that it could be a, a uh, spectacular failure, you know. Um, uh, he, he, my brother said many times he was worried that he was making Pluto Nash um, when, <laughs> when he started, and uh, and and it was right around. We had been filming for just a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, or something, and they took like a a, a very rough sizzle reel to uh, to Comic Con in San Diego, and. Um, I wasn't there for that, but but the principal sure. cast members, my brother, were there, and uh, and the audience went nuts, and they they could just tell, you know, the the um, the cast then sort of understood what the tone of the movie was. They got it, everybody got it, and then it was like, then it was like the the plane took off on the runway, and from then on out, I think we all felt very very confident that we were making something really. Uh, unique and, and special, you know, for, for uh, to, to use an overused word, it, it felt special. Well, I think that, that and I think the one that Taika did, the, the Thor Ragnarok, those are, and like Ant-Man, I've always wanted to see, oh, I always right. wanted to see Peyton Reed's Fantastic Four back when he was at Fox. Like, I like the, I like the comics that are like unabashedly pop. And I like that's the weird, that weird stuff is awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't have to answer this one, but while we're talking about sequels that are better than the original, Suicide Squad 2, I know you're biased. What's up? So biased. Will, will it be better than the first one? No offense to the first one. I've never seen the first one. Um, oh, it's awesome. I, 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 uh, um, but that movie's I don't tight, know. Though. I, I have seen the first one. I have it on good authority that the second one is freaking awesome. Okay. You know what I mean? Because that first one, it was tight. Uh, you know, it, it was a movie. Hey, I don't, you know, one way to... You know, it, I mean... It, one way to avoid the question... A, there's some really cool stuff in that movie, actually. I think there's some good stuff in that movie. Something I've learned... A lot this, of cool trailers. Something yeah. I've learned in, in, my, in my career is that if, if, if there's ever... If, you, if there's ever a movie where you don't want to answer the question, what did you think of it? Just don't watch it. Yeah. yeah. And then you can always say, I haven't seen it. It uh, gave us an <laughs> awesome Margot Robbie, uh, Harley Quinn. And yeah. that was, 
Oh, she's yeah, she's fantastic. Worth the weight in that gold. Give us that iconic Harlequin. Um, all right, so Tasha, this is what I want the Geekscapists to do. I'm going to throw your name back up here. You guys are going to go to Instagram. You guys are going to find the link in Tasha's bio. It's Tasha Litas on Instagram. I just threw it up on the screen. You Geekscapists are listening on the podcast. This contest is only going to run through Monday, and I really need you guys to go in, over to Odd Pop. That's A U D P O P. But the best way to get to the link is to go through the Instagram. Uh, link that Tasha has up on her profile. That's Tasha Litas on Instagram. Click on that link. Watch the short. It, if you guys are independent filmmakers, if you guys are maybe like you've got tons of experience, but you're trying to figure out how to make movies during the pandemic, watch this thing. It'll inspire you. If you guys are just getting into filmmaking, watch it. It'll inspire you. The things to look for. Guys, it's like minimal characters, minimal location, minimal shots. But the, but the writing is really good, and that is what a movie needs. Like, that's your in. If you don't have that character, you don't have a freaking story. It doesn't matter where they go. They can go to Mordor and chuck the freaking ring into the magma. You're not going to care if you don't like the character and don't relate to them. Watch the short. It'll. Re I mean, it, I was like, shit, what can I shoot? Hmm. <laughs> you can shoot a lot of things. It's awesome. It was, it was pretty great. Anything. Yeah. I definitely texted it to Heidi and was like, hey, Heidi, watch this short. I think I can get fired up by it. So, But Geekscape is what I want you to do is go check out that uh, link and vote for it because I think there's rounds to this. And if, you guys, if you guys are filmmakers, join the Odd Pop community anyway. There's always more opportunities like this to make something your own. Yeah, when you uh, sign up with it, you can sign up as a filmmaker and then – you have access to all of their filmmaking, uh, you know, tools and contests and everything. So just, you know, try it out. We'll do it. Uh, Von Bolden says, I will check it out. Von, you're one of my former film students for sure. Uh, now, Tasha, we got to talk about how we met because we've actually oh, yeah. gone without talking about it. Uh, I think Sean, I'm sorry to talk. you guys. Okay. Thanks, brother. Um, okay. So, Listen. He's tired of hearing the story of how we met when we saved each other. <laughs> now, listen, uh, the story goes a couple different ways. This yes. is how I remember it. We were in a Ragnar race on the last relay. We actually had the, like, 35th leg. Of it, wasn't the last race. it wasn't the last Okay, race. It's a relay race. But you, you and I, this is the last of us. We, were, we just had to run five miles and we were done. But we'd been up 24 hours on this relay, so we were tired. Um yeah. So we're running through a town, uh, and it, 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 I've actually, it, it, we were running to Calistoga, oh, but we were, we, were, we were running through a town called St. Helena, California, in Helena. Maryland. and we were both pretty tired, and I was running behind you, and usually in these races, you find somebody to I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't tired. I was super rejuvenated <laughs> and having a great time. Uh, we actually have an artist rendering of what that looked like. Uh, let me see if I can figure this out, Geekscape, as we're watching this live. I'm going to share the screen. So you guys, I'm, while he's sharing the screen, I'm going to explain to you this this race. It's like a, a massive relay. You're with these teams, and it's it's like 24 hours, or maybe it's even longer. I don't know. But you end up running the amount. Each uh, person on your team, I don't know, I think there are like six people, gets a different distance. The distance group that that Jonathan and I were in was like almost a marathon's worth of running, but over three different legs uh, over like when you sleep in a van while somebody's driving the van to, to be with the other person in the relay. And it was all through like Northern California. And I don't even remember what I saw. I saw Petaluma. <laughs> I saw some wine country. Yeah. You don't get a lot of sleep. You don't. We uh, run with a headlamp on for part of it. I mean, it's the craziest thing that my friends convinced me to do last minute. I really love doing them. Um, so but uh, so I so I, I see Tasha. You guys can see her on the screen. Like Tasha's a, a pretty woman, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pace with this girl. She's basically going my same pace, so I, I'm gonna keep with her. And I'm gonna throw a picture of another person pacing with Tasha from that same race um up on the screen and yeah, this, is about, this is about the distance that we were from each other if you guys can see this picture up there there's uh, there's tasha running and she's not even sweating in this photo and then there's this old dude behind uh, her and that's basically what i looked like that's actually, that's actually a photo of jonathan and i <laughs> yeah that, that's that's what i look like now <laughs> but um that, but 
honestly, what I'm saying is that's the distance between us. Yes. And I was kind of keeping that distance. Now, what happens is uh, we're running into this town of St. Helena, and I actually found it on Google Maps. Let me see if I can, uh, yes, show, if I can show this up on Google Maps. It's uh, super cute town. If you're in Northern California, it's, it's great. It's a great so spot. I found the town because I went and researched for this conversation, and I said, all right, can I find out where we were and it's here it is it's uh so exact location jonathan show it here. to us okay so we were coming up like right around this intersection <laughs> can you guys see that uh here we are in downtown saint helena and uh and we're just running along but it doesn't look like it's looking right now in the google maps it there, is under construction yeah there are shops it's under construction and then as we're going down the street right here running along don't mind us running a race we start to get to like this little intersection right past the Chevron station. And right around here, if you guys can see it, there there's a lane closure. And in the lane closure, I'm gonna go back to, uh, it, one of the lanes was actually blocked and in it was a uh, big ass tow sign that uh, looked like this. It was where they had taken a giant trailer sign and then put it right there to stop traffic. And, and it said, um, there's an event in process, in progress, like be careful. There, oh are run, there are runners on the road. It was like a sign intended to keep us safe. <laughs> and so what happens is I'm running that old guy distance behind you. And I see out of the corner of my eye, I'm, I'm about two feet behind you. Off to your to your off your left shoulder, two feet behind you, and I see this truck going straight in that lane that is about to be closed by this sign, and I don't see the truck getting out of that lane out of the corner of my eye. And what I realize is he's checking you out. He is looking at you. He is not he, he is not paying attention to the fact that this lane is about to turn into a giant sign, yeah. and he's going right into it. And <laughs> and we are we are right next to it we are right next we are just we're about to, to run right past it team and we're like about to get there and the truck is plowing down into this this sign and i see another car my and i reach out and i go stop or so i yell something and i and i'm like do not grab women guys do not grab women but i grabbed you and i and i said stop and the car the truck went right into this big ass sign and threw the whole fucking thing out of the park and uh, on the sidewalk right in front of you now i would argue okay i would argue that being behind you seeing the truck at the corner of my eye seeing that it was going straight yeah. to that sign that in grabbing you and keeping you from running forward where that sign ended up running right into the, the sign flew into the part the sidewalk right in front of you i saved your life it, I, I would argue that I saved your life. It like I'm gonna tell the story again about how I saved your life. Mm. <laughs> it like jumped. It like jumped around. You guys can't imagine. Like these signs, like they look small when you're driving, but when it's like when a car hits it and a piece of the car flies off, the car, no. the truck. The truck was fucked. Was, was fine. He like awesome. he like kind of clipped it and went around, but like a piece of the like bumper kind of flew off. No but big the whole deal. sign went onto the sidewalk. The sidewalk was gone. Yeah. So my my point of view of this is I'm running and I'm coming towards this this sign that's there to keep us safe. And I see also out of the corner of my eye this truck coming into this sign. And I'm like, oh, I have to save every single person behind me immediately. So I throw my arms back and lean back into all the people that may or may not be behind me. And I go, watch out, <laughs> Jonathan's life. This sign, it's, you have to drag it on a damn truck. This is a trailer sign that it would have killed everybody. That thing would have taken out multiple people um, I take out a whole town. I take it out half the town. The aliens would have invaded. Um, but I definitely think that uh, that we would not have met otherwise. And we, after, well, we would have met in the morgue as well. We would, have, we would have met. We would have met cold feet. We would have been dead, kid. Um, you know, after that, we kind of kept running, like sort of together. And and Jonathan, no, you were ahead of me. <laughs> Jonathan is very kind to say that. He actually finally at one point very kindly said something like, 
I'm, I'm going to pass you now, but like, see you later or something. And he did pass me. Nope. He did. You finished before I did. And, I, don't think that's um, true, you know. I think, I think that that part's true, but we did meet up at the finish and we were just like, Oh my God. Like, and it was finally like the whole rest of the run was like kind of this reliving this moment over and over again, which is great. Cause it was, at least something to think about during this long run. But afterwards, when I saw Jonathan again, it was like, just like, you're, I don't know you at all, but I hope you have the best life and everything goes wonderfully for you. And I'm pretty sure the next time I saw you was at San Diego Comic-Con. And I'm pretty sure I was like, what? And I'm pretty sure I didn't really quite know that there were all the other connections until I met you on the floor, loud noise everywhere, people talking, and was like, wait, you're from the race. You're that guy who like died and this and that. I um, I think you're right. I, I definitely for sure got at least your name at the at the finish line and yeah, like exchange media. information. Yeah. But like I'm a married man. I wasn't going to be using any of that. Like I was like, no, but, but, uh, yeah, you, you're right. We, we ended up meeting at, at either LA comic con again or San Diego comic con. Yeah. Uh, San Diego was before. It was LA insane. Uh, yeah. nobody believed the story. Even our own teammates at the finish line didn't believe. I know, the story. We were telling everyone also to their credit, like they were all really tired and exhausted from being in a van and running as well. But I wish ever we were like, you wouldn't believe what happened. And everyone was like, and I'm like, did you hear what I just said? We almost died together. We almost died together. Uh, and Ricto on YouTube says the grabbing was totally not necessary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys, don't don't grab women. You know, wait for them to throw their arms across the way and like save everybody. <laughs> yeah. Just, Wait for them to do that whole thing. But don't. also, don't let anybody die when you can stop it from happening. Listen, if it was between grabbing a woman and watching her get splattered across the sidewalk by a giant sign kicked into her by a truck that didn't see it because he was checking said woman out, I'm grabbing the woman. I'm sorry. I'll apologize later. But no, 100%. Like, you, you get it. And I, I think I grabbed you by the arm. I didn't exactly. It wasn't like it wasn't like yo, watch out! I grabbed you by the ass. I was like yo, let me do a reach around on them. Like I wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> like that was gonna happen. I, was, I grabbed you strategically. That would have been a hilarious way to be saved. Like oh, excuse me. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just what? cupping them titties. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Hashtag me too. Mm. Geeks gave us, it's strange how this world keeps spinning and these connections happen. And here we are on Geekscape. Okay, there's a couple things I want you guys to do. All right, Geekscape, this is your mission. You Geekscape us love the missions. I want you to go to Odd Pop and go find Tasha's short. There's an easy way to do it. You go to Instagram, you find Tasha Litas. That's her uh, hashtag, or that's her, her ID there on Instagram. That's her, her handle. And there's a link in her bio. You click on that link, you watch her short, you join, I think you gotta join Odd Pop, but you should if you're a filmmaker, and then you end up voting for her short. You voted up a couple notches, and she gets in the next round, and hopefully she gets cool stuff. Uh, there's all sorts of cool contests on the site, so you guys who are creative, you guys can make stuff too. Uh, the other thing I want you guys to do is I want you guys to put in your brain the Fatal Collective. It's a group of six female filmmakers who have each other's back, and make horror stuff together and genre stuff. And this is Geekscape. We love horror stuff. We love genre stuff. Keep that keep that group in your mind because you've heard about them on Geekscape. They've been to places like Fantastic Fest premiering their shorts and they're gonna start making some cool stuff as soon as this pandemic's over and probably during the pandemic, they've already started making cool stuff. So just, just be like, oh, I remember them from Geekscape. And now they're making cool stuff for the studios. And the other thing I want you guys to do is um, no, just stay safe and make it through the pandemic. And uh, and then when uh, Sean comes back to promote, I don't know, Suicide Squad 2 or something, be like, oh, yeah, that sequel was better than the first. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Promote yet. Well, the, the movie's not out. I know, but the name of the, I just wanted to say that oh, the, yes. the name of the movie is The Suicide Squad. It's That's, not actually a sequel. No, what's cool about that is it's got the, like, that 70s 
feel to that name. It's like the Suicide Squad. It's it's like the Dirty Dozen. It's like yeah. you know that whole thing. I think that's cool. And I, I can't talk about the movie other than that it's it really is man, it's good. And mm -hmm. uh, and what else can I say about it? Oh, that you did have you absolutely don't need to see the first one. Yeah. To, and to see it and enjoy it. It's a, it's, it's a, a new, different, it's a, it's very a new different incarnation thing. More, I know. Not so much a sequel. Well, as a big comic book fan, I'm down. I see all these movies and uh, and the cast is awesome. The dude we got to get on the show too is your little German friend who was in that movie. <laughs> Flula. 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 Flula and I also <laughs> met at Comic Con. Flula is awesome. Flula Borg is hilarious. I should get him on the show. Yeah, I love him. Lula is um, big basketball fan too. Hilarious! Oh yeah, um, we'll go to we'll go to, we'll yeah. go to Clippers game. Guys, well, whenever we go back to basketball games, we'll all go to a basketball game. Because I got to tell you, Sean, the last live game I went to was that one before Christmas where the Jazz visited the Clippers and Donovan did that baseline slam. Mm. And Jazz came out of there. That was a, that was a pretty fucking awesome game to be at live. Thank you, Heidi, for the tickets. That was before the that was before the Clippers really put it together when the and. The Jazz were still in a position to beat them. Don't 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 play that game. All right, uh, I'll, I'll be we'll be talking about that. You know what? You know, I, you know, you know my excuse this year is going to be like, yeah, but Boyan got thumb surgery. He's out. It's weird. I I'm I'm an atheist, but I believe that God hates the Clippers. I don't know. How to... <laughs> he used to think God just hated D David uh, Sterling. He, <laughs> but now, yeah, like, oh. this is like they finally. This was their year. The Clippers finally had a real shot at making an actual legit championship run, and um, and uh, God sent a virus to destroy humanity. Um, coincidence? I don't know. I'll yeah. tell you what. Uh, there have God been a couple of destroy the chances of the Clippers, and that is all it's about. That uh, that Lob City team was pretty scary too, but Blake Griffin. Yeah, I, know. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of the what ifs, and you know, as a, you know, against the Rockets, and uh, you know, yeah. and 2015 was well, that's the worst. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. <laughs> Where the Rockets came back on them, that was really that was not fun. Uh, as a Clippers fan, as a Jazz fan, you're just like, oh, thank God it's not us because it's usually us. Um, all right, well, Sean, we'll get you on the show one day, but uh, what? right now we're going to talk about your lady. You guys know what to do. You guys know to go to her Instagram. Find the link. It's up on the site. Sean, love you, buddy. You too. Thanks. Um, and you guys hit that link. Come on. Hit that link and uh, and vote for her short. Geeks gave us, thank you. Uh, Tasha, mm -hmm. anything else you want to say? Um, man, thank you so much for for all of this. It's so cool to see. For saving your life. <laughs> it's always cool to see people's faces now. Like it was like, oh, faces or whatever. But like <laughs> pandemic times, it's like, oh, ooh, yeah. it's so pretty. Um, it's great to see you. Um, thanks for having me here. Thanks for talking about Jane in Space. That's just this, a little pandemic film. Jane in Space 2. Jane in I Space love it. is a sequel, you guys. You can find uh, Jane in Space 1 that's not labeled 1 just floating around on my Instagram, but that one doesn't require votes. The one that really needs the votes is, is Jane in Space 2. They're very different. Jane in Space 1, I would say, is funnier, and Jane in Space 2, I would say, is is deeper. It's fun. Uh, if anyone cares, but mostly, thanks. <laughs> uh, Tasha, I want to work with you. I want to get out of this pandemic, and I want to make yes. live action stuff again, so let's figure out how to do that. With teams um, of people who we love and we can bring together and who have special skills and are good at what they're good at. Oh, I if I I hope that I'm the least talented person on my set. That I know yeah. I'm. I have a chance of making something I'm proud of. I agree. <laughs> Tasha, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so love much. You, love you, kiddo. Love uh, that was Tasha um, Halimi again, guys. Go to Tasha's Instagram it, and uh, vote for Jane in Space too. This is Geekscape. I love you guys. I'm gonna be back next week with more Geekscape. Uh, if this is your first time watching. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. We put out the podcast. Subscribe on any podcatchers you got, you guys got. If you guys are watching on YouTube or Twitch or any of those other uh, video platforms, go and hit that notification button so you guys know when I'm going live and you guys can watch alongside and drop the comments and this and that. Love you guys so much. Uh, Geekscape forever. Over and out. Peace.